So everyone, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming to the Aetna general session, and I'll just go ahead and get things kicked off. So we'll start today with a brief introduction. I'll be introducing myself. I'll give you some background on the company, Aetna CVS Health, the story of our combined enterprise, and then I'll talk for a bit about all the different actuarial programs that we have from our full-time rotational program, our full-time non-rotational program, our internship program, and also our new apprenticeship program. Wrap things up finally by talking about all of our virtual college days that are currently in the process of happening across all seven of our actuarial hubs across the country. So some brief background about me. So I started working at Aetna CVS Health back in 2019. I was actually an intern. I was working out of the Atlanta office at the time. My role was more what you would consider traditional for all of my key states, which was Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia Gulf states. Love my internship, had a great time. Graduated from Florida State University in December 2019, came back, started working full time that following January, right around the same time that uh, the world was ending as we know it. So definitely a fun, fun time to start working full time. Uh, I started in the rotational program. So my first rotation was in a medical economics focused role where I was the primary business owner of the database where all of our actuaries go and set their large claims reserves. I was responsible for a lot of ad hoc large claims reporting and analysis as well. So if you see you got some heat going on with large claims in a specific month, I was the person you were reaching out to. Started my second rotation in August of 2021. I'm currently on the ACA risk adjustment team. Love it. Um, you know, outside of my direct work day to day, I'm also pretty involved in our community as well. I'm part of the diversity leadership team. I'm also on our intern committee. I'm part of our recruiting committee. I wear a lot of hats. Um, when I'm not studying for actuarial exams, which is a lot recently uh, in my free time, studying for my first fellowship exam now. So it's a whole new world. I enjoy singing, even though I'm not very good at it, boxing, even though I don't really do that anymore. You can't really take hits to the head studying for actuarial exams. I can confirm it doesn't work. And also going to the gym. So definitely have to have some interaction today. I just don't want everybody to be sitting around listening to me. That is not fun at any time, no matter who you are. Uh, so I've got one trivia question for everyone by a virtual show of hands, right? or if anyone's brave enough to put it in the chat or unmute themselves. Where did CVS sit on the Fortune 500 list following the acquisition of Aetna? Does any one person out there want to give it a guess and it can't be Eric <laughs> or Imani? I guess B, nine. B, nine? B as well. B as well, okay. Thank you. So I'll say that we're not practicing any modesty today during our general session. The answer is actually A, number four. <laughs> so yeah, pretty high. Uh, and that segues nicely into some background on our company. So on this next few slides here, we kind of just break out everything that Aetna CBS Health Folk brought to the table, but I'll kind of just summarize everything into one big picture. I'll start by saying that the story of our combined enterprise actually began back in 2018 with a multi-billion dollar merger and a very simple and straightforward set of goals, right? We wanted to make healthcare more accessible, we wanted to make healthcare more affordable, and we wanted to make our collective healthcare experience a better one, just period. So you fast forward now five years to 2023, and in my opinion, and a lot of my colleagues' opinion, we're doing a great job of achieving these goals as we continue to be a consistent, profitable, proven driver of healthcare innovation in this country. So like I said, on these slides here, just some quick examples of what CVS Health brought to the table, what Aetna brought to the table as part of the acquisition, but just as a real example that everybody can immediately grasp, right? Of something that's only possible as a byproduct of the acquisition. So has anyone over like the past few years or so noticed that the local CVS pharmacy store had like a big redesign and it now includes like a, a big walk-in clinic area? Has anybody noticed that? No. No? <laughs> You don't shop at CVS much? No, not really. All right, so I mean, if you did, you would notice that it did get a redesign to include a new walk-in clinic area, and that's called a minute clinic, right? So understanding what Aetna brought to the table as part of the acquisition, right? One of the largest health insurance companies in the nation with 20 million plus lives insured, large provider network, understanding what CVS Health brought to the table, right? With apparently, and it blows my mind every time I look at this deck, right? But apparently 85% of Americans 
live within 10 miles of a CVS pharmacy location. So Lois, I'm, I'm, I got a question mark over my head right now, wondering how you haven't seen it, but you take those two things, right? And what you're able to get is a product in the minute clinics that expands a wide variety of high quality and low to no cost walk-in medical services to many Americans around the country, right? So that's a perfect example, the minute clinics in and of themselves of the, the value that we're able to bring as a byproduct of the combined enterprise. And that is only possible because of it. So moving on, I mean, it's a big company, Fortune 4 following the acquisition of Aetna, you might be thinking, okay, like I'm an actuary, where do I fit in, right? And the answer is pretty much everywhere, possibly even anywhere, right? Like just to give a perfect example of the level of esteem that actuaries carry at the company, our current CFO, who is on every single earnings call every quarter uh, with our current CEO, Karen Lynch, uh, Sean Gurton, he actually has an actuarial background. Uh, so that just gives you an example of how high and how far reaching actuaries go in the company. But just to give you some real examples here, we've got actuarial opportunities, traditional and non-traditional and data science roles medical economics, like my first rotation, my current rotation, which is more finance and ACA risk adjustment. You've got like more traditional style, local market roles, rate review teams. You've got everything all across the spectrum. What's most important is the upshot, right? What's most important is understanding that actuaries are some of the most core and diverse business professionals that you can find here at the company, period. So moving on and talking about our programs now, the first of which being our internship program. So I'm actually a byproduct of it. I interned back in 2019, like I said, in the Atlanta office. The structure, how it works, so it's 12 weeks. You work with your day-to-day -day manager on a real project, right? It's not like any sort of project that was reverse engineered. So an intern can come to some sort of actionable insight or conclusion at the end of the 12 weeks. It's a real project that was really on your team's project list at some point in time. You work with your day-to-day -day manager to complete it, to own it, to produce results, to put a presentation together, all to eventually present it at the end of the summer to the entire actuarial community. So it's a really, really, really good way to develop um, over the course of that 12 week period. Um, the goal, of course, is to really introduce you to our large actuarial community, get you ready for a full time position as you go complete your last semester and then come back to us the next summer. The benefits. Uh, for our interns, we do a lot. I'm part of the intern committee. So it's a committee made of student volunteers just to ensure our interns have the best summer experience that they possibly can. Um, you have a variety of learning series and other career development opportunities available to you over the course of the summer. Uh, executive leadership inside and outside of the actual community make themselves available to you. This past summer, actually, and I'm still kind of blown away when I think about this, but one of our actual interns actually managed to get like a, a 15 to 30 minute one on one with our current CEO, Karen Lynch, you know, so if that that kind of gives you any sort of indication of the culture that we have around interns at, at our company, I think it, it's a really good one, a really favorable one. And it's a really great way to get a lot of exposure to our company, to what being a healthcare actuary is like and then to kind of get you ready for that full-time position, kind of completing your last semester of, of school. And then talking about our full-time program, it's recently gone through some changes. So our full-time program that's rotational, the one that I'm in is called our actual development program. So I'm gonna talk about the first path. There's two different paths, the first of which the accelerated path. So the main difference between the two is that the accelerated path, the path that I'm in is, is rotational, right? The rotations are a part of the program. You don't graduate the program until you complete four rotations and each rotation is, is around 18 to 24 months long. So students here will typically see, will, will start in this path coming out of college or returning from an internship. The goal is just to not just create strong actuaries, but to create well diversified business leaders who've got varying experiences and, and time spent in different parts of our company. So the benefits, I mean, it's a strong program. You get around 140, if not more, paid study hours, coverage of all your exam materials and fees, raises for passing exams, competitive raises as well. They're constantly being reassessed, exam support. And one of the big benefits too that I think isn't listed here, or it's kind of just like 
alluded to in that bottom bullet point is the access to the large actual community that we have here at Edna CVSL. When you're going through these exams, it's probably best that you don't go through them alone. So just having access to all the different people, whether that be the people that are similar level to you in your like actuarial hub or not, just being able to get advice from them and to be able to go through the same journey with them is a, is a big benefit of being part of a big student program like this. We also have a forum that we host every year in the summer. Now it's in person where all of the actuaries go out to Hartford, which is where our headquarters is. And you just get a chance to network there. The same people that you're meeting year round virtually, if they're not part of your assigned hub, uh, you get to meet them in person and you get to have a bunch of different development opportunities there, like getting an in-person speaker series opportunities from members of our actuarial steering committee, the executives there. Just overall, a great opportunity to build leadership skills while you're still a developing actuary sitting for your exams. But then we also have another path on our full-time program for students, and that's the flexible path. So like I brought up earlier, the main difference between the two is that the accelerated path is rotational, and then the flexible path is not rotational. How we like to market it is that it's your development at your own pace, hence where we get the term flexible from. So the exam requirements for this one are a little different. For our full-time program, there's like a, an understanding that you sit for at least two a year. For our flexible program, it's just one, and it's also non-rotational. So if you did want to rotate, instead of having like a forum where you would go and you would kind of navigate your career there with built-in rotations, you would kind of have to reach out, take advantage of your networking skills, and see what's out there for you. There's no built-in rotations. But one thing that we really want to emphasize is that the support that you receive to, to develop your leadership skills, your analytical skills, is the exact same in both programs. So both programs get access to a peer mentor. Both programs get access to all of our actuarial community-wide training seminars, all of the speaker series that I mentioned before. Both program students get invites to our big forum out in Hartford in the summer. So there's no difference in the resources available to an ADP accelerated path student or a flexible path student. The only difference is where that person is at in their career and kind of what they'd like to see for themselves in terms of the pace that they'd like to be moving at that point in their career. New as well is our new apprenticeship style program, the Actuarial Exposure Program. So the program's a 12-month contracted position. This is more for students who have maybe fallen out of the regular, typical kind of school. I sit for a few exams while I'm in school. I do an internship, I get a job cycle, right? Maybe some people are career changers. You were a teacher for a while, or maybe you just never managed to find an internship and you just didn't manage to land a full-time position. The goal of the exposure program is to put someone on a team for that 12 month contracted role to give them exposure to some real actuarial work, give them exposure to really develop their technical skills, develop all of their other skills. And then there's assessment at the end of the 12 months to kind of see which path that they fit on, right? So do they kind of see themselves being uh, a better fit for our accelerated path full-time student program or our flexible path full-time student program? It's a really good opportunity that we wanted to create and put out there to really target those people who have historically been excluded from like university recruiting pipelines. So if you want more information, there's an email, there's an inbox. We're currently hosting interviews for actuarial exposure program positions, AEP positions. I'll send that all over to uh, Eric after the call um, for him to distribute. And then we got another trivia question, the final one. So uh, you didn't get it earlier, but you got a chance to redeem yourself coming up here at the end. So the next question is, how old was the youngest person to become a fellow of the Society of Actuaries? Does anybody want to take a chance on that one? 22. I'd be. I'm going B again, 20. Okay, we sticking with B, 20, and we got a 22. So a few people have redeemed themselves. The answer to this one is B, 20. He was 20 years old, which makes me feel like I'm very behind. I'm about to be 26 in a few months here. So I, maybe I got to speed up, right? But uh, yeah, 20 years old. That's wild, huh? So. 
just showing everybody about those actual hubs and where we're located. So, you know, we've got my hub, Imani's hub. We're both in Atlanta. We also have a lot of actuaries working out of Bluebell, Pennsylvania, which is like Philly metro area. We've got a hub out in Chicago, one in Concord, California, which is like the Bay Area, San Francisco, Falls Church, Virginia, which is like DC metro area. We've got our headquarters up in Hartford. And then we also have a hub in the Kansas City area. So I want to wrap things up by talking about College Day. So College Day is a half day virtual experience that is happening right now across those seven actual hubs that I just listed out. The goal is to just get you more exposed to our community, what it means to be a healthcare actuary, and then also develop like some technical skills a little bit and to network as well with other students in all of those different regions that I just listed out where actuarial hubs are and with actuaries in our company. So I'll be hosting the College Day for Atlanta. You get a chance to meet me, probably get a chance to meet Imani on a call and all of our other actuaries working there as well. So it's a really great opportunity uh, throughout the day. There's things available like one-on-one -on -one speed networking. I'm talking one-on-one -on -one for like 20 minutes. So you won't be sharing that time with any other student. You get a chance to really drill into an actuary, ask them questions, and that's across different levels as well. So we're going to have volunteers that are in senior leadership, volunteers that are new hires, just started, right? Some experience behind them. And then we also have an interactive case study throughout the day. Um, so you'll be working in a group with other students led by a volunteer actuary, and then he'll or, or she'll or they'll kind of guide you along the, the project as you complete it with the other students in your group. So it's just a good opportunity, like I said, kind of reemphasizing to build your network, to learn more about what it means to work at Aetna CVS Health, to, to learn more directly from our actuaries as well, and of course, to understand what it means to be a healthcare actuary. So I'll also float along that information to Eric to distribute after the call, um, but our interest forms, which is how you attend, are open now. We have seven different interest forms aligning to all seven of our actual hubs that I listed out. So you would just pick the one that best aligns to your geography. Like say you go to Boston University or you go to Howard or Harvard, you might pick the Hartford College Day, right? But feel free to pick whichever one that aligns to wherever you would like to be at potentially for like a full-time opportunity down the line. So I'll float that out. All you have to do is submit uh, an interest form that aligns to one of our seven actuarial hubs, and then also email your resume over and that's it. So yeah, with that, I'll wrap things up and I'll leave some time here at the end. If anyone has any questions for me, I'd love to answer. Are there any sponsors? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lars. Okay, are there any sponsorships for international students? Yes. Short answer, yes. Yeah, we've okay. got international students part of our upcoming intern cohort. We just hired some international students part of our full-time cohort right now. So the answer is yes, Lois. All right, thank you. Uh, I have a question regarding that as well, because I know that for some company, like they have a specific slots for uh, international students. And so uh, what, like, is there any specific uh, period of time that you expect that international student would apply? Yeah, no, we don't have anything like that broken out right now. Um, we just offer sponsorship for all of our international students coming into our pipeline. So I, I wouldn't say that that's something that you'd have to worry about. Thank you so much. Uh, would you mind if I have another question? Oh yeah, go ahead. All the questions. Yeah. I it. also see it on like the job description and you mentioned it here before, but I was wondering like, is there any special characteristics or maybe anything that you expect that uh, would have in like a successful intern? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So in our interns, the number one thing that we look at or look for, and I'll say it's like a combo deal, right? One is intellectual, intellectual curiosity, right? So you want to know more about what you're doing. You want to see the big picture. You don't just want to be like task oriented, complete what you have ahead of you and then just pass it off and then that's it. And two, that goes with that directly is a willingness to ask questions, right? If you've got the intellectual curiosity, if you want to dive deeper, if you want to like always know the answer to the question, which is why you're going to be driven to ask it. So those are the, the two most important things that you need to be a successful intern, be a sponge. 
so much. Uh, I'm just wondering if anyone wants to ask the, another question, but I have some more questions to ask. So um, I have another question because I saw you mentioned about like a uh, real project and also gaining real experience when being an intern at CBS. So I wonder if you could maybe elaborate more on like, is there any specific type of project like the past intern would be working on or maybe your past projects that you were working on as an intern? And do you see it like still in the company, like in the future, even when the intern leave? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. So I've definitely seen a lot of projects that interns have worked on continue to be actively used on teams after that intern has already gone back to school, finishing up their last semester. Um, and for an example of a real project, so when I was interning back in 2016, like I said, it was more on like a, a more traditionally focused team. So focused on traditional actuarial functions of pricing, reserving, forecasting. Uh, we had one block of business, right, that maybe wasn't performing as well. Um, newly enrolled, which means we didn't have any experience. We have no like claims. We have no premium for them previously. Completely new group that we would be insuring. Um, we were going from one risk score methodology to another. Basically, the upshot of what my project was kind of to assess, OK, how many of these quotes were we able to close on? when we were using the first risk score methodology, and then how many were we able to close on on the new one? And could this be a driver of why we're seeing such poor performance for this block? So at a really high level, that's kind of what I did. It was a risk score analysis. I did it, I owned it over that 10 weeks, asked questions on it, I tried to drive it. There were, there were hurdles, right, that I had to get over, packaged them all into a final presentation for, an actual, for the actual community at the end of the summer. And yeah, it went well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I hope that was high enough level. <laughs> Sally, I think you might have had a question. Yeah, sure, I have a question. Um, so you mentioned these hubs, and um, do you need to live, I guess, near the hubs, or is it kind of something that you can travel in? Um, how often are y'all in office as well? Yeah, um, I live pretty close to my hub. And I want to preface by saying that we used to have a, a, a hub requirement for all of our new hires. We no longer have a hub requirement. So if your current living situation doesn't align to one of our seven hubs, you would not be obligated to move close to one. But most of the people that are aligned to one do live relatively close. Like in Chicago, I know that all the students there will typically go in every Tuesday, Thursday, they all pretty much walk to the office, right? Atlanta, we've been going in every Tuesday, Friday, a lot of us live close. And I'll also add too that while it's not a requirement anymore for our new hires to move to one of our different hub locations, it's still highly recommended because I mean, it's really good early in your career to kind of have that direct access to a lot of leadership a lot of your peers like directly within like your same geography so we got a strong community of folks at all of them jordan if you don't mind i'll add a little bit of um color to that statement so we technically have an eighth hub which is a work from home hub so if you choose to work from home permanently that's an option for you as well um but if you choose and like we said we highly encourage you to want to be affiliated with the hub um, for our full-time employees specifically they um Aetna does provide moving expenses to help you get closer to the hub that you, you'd be aligned to. Cool. Anyone else want to hop in with a question? questions because I know that like being an actuary usually the work would also like be remote or hybrid so how do you see that connections or like how to avoid mismatch in communication at like CBS yeah that's a really good question I'll say it's such a big company like for example I did start before the pandemic happened and pretty much everyone was work from home so I was in the office before a bit it's such a big company that you'll often be like in, in direct contact on a, on a frequent basis with people that aren't in your office. So the skills that you built for being able to communicate effectively across the country 
right? Don't really change when we all start working remote or when we all move to a hybrid deal where we're in the office some days and then some days we aren't. Thank so, you. Yeah. Uh, I have, oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have another question because I saw on the website like uh, the core value of the company, like collaborations, innovation, caring, integrity. Like, I was wondering, like, do you see how, how can you see if like there's any events or how do you see those values apply to the, the workplace or the job that you work in the use of it at the company? Yeah, like, um, let's see, I'll give one example. And this is definitely something that I can talk to because uh, we've gone public with it. But I mean, like our recent expansion, one of the values that we have, like our CBS core enterprise values is innovation, right? So we left the uh, individual exchanges on the ACA marketplace uh, a few years ago um, because it just wasn't really a successful business venture for us. As we've kind of gone back in, it's taken a, a certain amount of innovation and caring, kind of understanding that now as a combined enterprise, we have a unique opportunity and positioning there, kind of in tandem with our minute clinics too, and all of our health hubs out there that I spoke to earlier, to re-enter and to kind of just, just drive up innovation in that space, even though we have a history of, of not really performing that great there. Um, so that, that's one example, and I give that example because it directly rate, relates to a lot of the work that I do on the ACA risk adjustment team. Thank you. That's really insightful. Yeah, there's always some exciting stuff going around. Eric, do we have to end right at five? Or? Yeah, because we're only allowed to have one session running in Zoom at a time, so we've got another session starting right then. But uh for, for those uh links that you shared with me we'll be happy to share those out with everyone registered for the session so um awesome. we'll be happy to pass along email addresses and, and web web links and and also obviously at no will be at the virtual career fair on tuesday and so hopefully you guys have a, a good appreciation of all that Aetna has to offer um, they've been a, a longtime supporter of IABA, so we're we're very appreciative to have them not just at the career fair, but as a long term partner uh, for the association. I don't know if there's anything if you Jordan or Amani want to share. Um, Jordan also is our Atlanta affiliate uh, chair or president. I don't know what the exact title is, Jordan. So if you're in the Atlanta area, he's the one coordinating events. So feel free to stop in and, and meet him in person. All true. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Moni.